Did you guys know it was possible to completely transform the color of your leather or maybe you just want to restore the original pigment? Today I've condensed hundreds of hours of experience to show you how to simply and easily dye your leather with little to no mess. Let me show you how to color, condition, and conserve your leather. Let's get to it. Welcome to today's video. My name is Evan and it's my goal to share with you the skills and tools needed to love your leather. I've made so many mistakes in the past and either ruined leather or made a complete mess doing so. So today, be prepared for all of my pro tips that will save you time, energy, and money and ultimately create the best results. Now, this boot isn't very dirty, so they don't actually need to be cleaned. What? That's right, it's actually just worn out and dry, and that's where many people misunderstand the difference between condition versus cleanliness. Now I could have easily restored this leather simply by conditioning it with some leather cream, and you could do so for your boots as well, but these are my personal shoes and I decided that green just isn't for me, so we're going to dye them a rich black pigment today. Let's begin. Now the very first thing that we wanna do is remove the laces because we want all access to the leather as we dye it. Secondly, though these boots aren't very dirty, yours may need to be cleaned or simply brushed off in order to remove any dust, dirt, or debris before dyeing. Next, you wanna pay attention because this step is crucial to ensuring that your dye evenly penetrates your leather fibers. You wanna deglaze or remove the finish of your leather in order for your new pigment to absorb evenly. You guys can simply use rubbing alcohol or a dedicated leather deglazer to remove the finish and I'd highly suggest using something like a cotton pad to absorb any residue from the finish of your leather. Do note that this method works best with smooth full grain leathers and you can also do this with suede dye for your suede shoes as well. Alright guys, do yourself a favor and invest in good quality masking tape. Cheap ones will definitely bleed through and ruin your project. And because we're using liquid dye, it's going to penetrate even more than something like paint. Doing a good masking job is vitally important and sometimes it can be frustrating because you want to make sure that it's perfect as not to ruin anything underneath. A pro tip that I've learned is to use long strips of tape for straight sections and short strips for curves. I hope that helps you guys out. Once you're finished masking, it's time to share my secret dyeing solution. Now I'd say there's all kinds of leather dyes out there on the market, but Phoebing's leather dye has always provided the best results for me. It comes with a wool dauber, but you may need a sponge brush to get in all those nooks and crannies. So Phoebing's leather dye is so pigmented that I found that mixing a ratio of two thirds rubbing alcohol to one third leather dye to be the perfect solution. Now, if I could impart one thing for anyone watching this redye video, it's to buy yourself this refillable felt marker. This has prevented me so many accidental spills or any unnecessary messiness that comes with dye jobs. Links in the description below. If you guys don't have access to this marker or are innately messy, here's a pro tip for you. Just use any spare cardboard lying around the house underneath your project to catch any dye or spills. If anything, it'll help your peace of mind. Guys, I know how hard it can be to wait between coats, but thankfully, because this solution is mainly alcohol, it's going to dry super quickly. Make sure to dye a panel at a time before going back over for a second coat. Now, of course, the easiest color to dye your leather is in fact black because it hides wear so well, but it also makes your leather shoes and boots look their best the longest because you barely see any marks, stains, or dirt in comparison to light colored boots or even brown boots for that matter. However, if you guys are trying to dye faux leather or patent leather, just know it's not going to work out very well due to the nature of the material, though I have tried using fabric dye for canvas shoes and it's worked out great. Also, check out my redye video playlist where I restore all kinds of leather using similar methods. If you guys aren't able to reach any tight areas like around the eyelets, go ahead and stick with me because I have a solution for that.
Now, as I said earlier, you may want to use a common sponge paintbrush in order to get into those tight spaces. I picked up a multi-pack of eight brushes at my local dollar store. I wasn't able to get in between the leather and the midsole with my felt marker, but this brush did pretty great. One of our very last steps is to condition our leather, especially after we use a very drying solution such as rubbing alcohol. I chose to use a horsehair dauber brush to evenly and gently disperse the leather cream into all the tight spots as well as deeply into the leather pores. Nourishing our leather with waxes and oils will prevent creasing and cracking and excessive dryness which will enable our leather to last for years to come. If you guys have a shiny and hazy finish after using the leather dye, using some leather conditioner and buffing it out should get rid of it. And for this very reason, I chose to use this brush. You guys can use a simple paintbrush around these areas if that's all you have. Now, if you guys are using a different color dye, I'd highly recommend just going with a neutral leather cream for the ease of it, but due to the nature of this dye job, I wanted to be extra thorough and use a black pigmented leather cream. Although products like Shroom GK Leather Cream or Big 4 Leather Conditioner are highly recommended. Let me know your favorite leather conditioners in the comments below. Another fun hack is sealing off any loose threads with a lighter. You will only ruin your leather if you keep heat on it for a prolonged period of time, so no need to worry. And these black boots are looking amazing compared to that dry and scuffed up green that we had before. If you personally want a matte black look, feel free to stop here, but I'll be showing you guys how to buff and shine up your leather in order to disperse all of the waxes and oils as well as give it a like new look. A rookie mistake I often see people make is that they confuse brushing hard with brushing fast. And the difference is that you don't want to press down hard, you just want to brush your leather in a fast up and down motion. The reason for this is because the friction created from the fast moving bristles heats up the oils and waxes which gives us our shine. Another pro tip is to leave on your masking tape until the very end because you don't want to brush any of the dyes from your leather onto the portions that you covered. Since we're done, let's go ahead and sit back and enjoy our hard-earned results. We are almost done, but a vital step you don't want to miss is conserving your leather. One of the best ways to maintain your leather is to fill it out, and you can achieve this by using shoe trees. Though, if you guys don't have any, using some recycled paper or plastic bags can be a decent substitute. Make sure not to overfill your leather. The old laces were way too big and round for my taste, so I'll be replacing them. Personally, I lace my shoes inward for a cleaner look. How do you guys prefer your laces? Last but not least, we'll be finishing these boots off with a midsole polish from today's sponsor, ShoeMGK. I'll be generously applying some cream on this applicator sponge, though you can never use too little. This will both protect and shine your midsole. We could have definitely used this cream on the top leather as well in order to create an effortless shine, but since we already used the pigmented cream for dyeing purposes, there's really no need to add more right now, though I will come back and use this cream routinely. And that is a wrap. I am so pleased with how these boots came out and I truly hope that yours will as well. Before we get to the before and after, a huge thank you for everyone watching this video until this point. It means so much to me. My goal with each video is to condense the countless hours of experience and research into these short videos for your guys' benefit. So if you learned something or enjoyed watching the video, please consider subscribing, give the video a thumbs up, and take a moment to share this valuable video with a friend. A quick shout out to our sponsor, ShoeMGK. Thank you for providing us tools to respect our shoes. If you guys want the results I get, head over to ShoeMGK.com and don't forget to use my code EVAMIS for 20% off and free shipping. As always, remember to love your leather.
If you guys think you enjoyed this video, you have to watch my Muddy Red Wing Boots restoration or my ultimate guide for Doc Martens. See you over there.